The drugs have worn off and I feel better now. But I can't let them do that to me again. I need to get out of here. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. But I know it. Let me just think for a second. Sheila. Yes. It was my mother who sent you, after all. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. But my head's all messed up. So, let's have a little chat, sweetheart. Do you know how to get out of here? We're not supposed to get out. We must stay here. Do what they say. Take pills they give us. Sometimes, if I behave, they give me the red stuff. I wait for it. I'm being good. What is this red stuff? It's a drug. My favorite one. Red stuff takes the pain away. I must stay here. Good nurses have been most kind. They always remember. They know I'm suffering. But it is not the same as the drugs I see in my dreams. On the other side of the mirror, there's a spider's heart full of drugs. I just can't seem to find it anymore. I see. about we swap our name bands oh yeah I don't mind but that would be like a favor to you yeah well technically you wouldn't lose anything because I'd give you my name band instead does that make any sense sure yeah I do want something better in return though I'm not that stupid I know you'll use it to get out of here Oh, I never said you're stupid. I... I just really want to go home. Please understand. That's fine. I don't mind. I'll give it to you if you get me the red stuff. What do you say? I thought nurses give it to you anyway. No, not that. I'm talking about the real thing. Something you can only get in the world of dreams. Now that is something special. Is it... safe? It's perfectly safe. Um... Okay. I'll see what I can do. What exactly is this little treat you mentioned? It's the red teardrop of pure happiness. They bring it, I drink it down, and my pain goes away. Without it, I just feel so angry. It's like I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's funny, but I just get so fucking angry sometimes. I'm dying, I think. We're all dying, I heard. She said I'd go to hell for it, but I didn't do anything. I didn't know. Does he know? Who? Him! Right. Okay. No, probably not. I need the red medicine. I need it now. I must be a good girl. I must be a nice girl. Maybe I could get you some of that stuff. Do you know where they keep it? Oh, they have it hidden well. You can't get there. Or maybe you can. I see it in my dreams sometimes. It's where the nurses are. But in my dream, there are no nurses there. I see it, but I can't get it. It's so near, and yet so far. I can still hear the broken heartbeat of the spider's heart.
I'll talk to you later, yeah? Yes. Go. Be careful. They're watching us. And remember, we must be nice to earn the red stuff. Always be nice. Poor woman. I've found the thing you asked me for, but are you absolutely certain it won't harm you? Don't be silly. Of course it won't. Fine. I hope you know what you're doing. Can I have your name band now, please? Yes. No matter what they say, I do keep my promises. What do they? You know what? It doesn't matter. Thank you for your help. Sorry, ma'am, can't let you through. We'll need to see a discharge letter from your doctor first. Here. Are you happy now? Yes, that seems fine. Can I just check your name band to confirm that you are indeed Anne Burton? Oh, all right. I didn't realize you knew how to read. There you go. Can I go now? Of course. Thank you, ma'am. We'll see you soon. No, you won't. Now get out of my way. And you must be Susan Ashworth. Um, well, perhaps I am. Do you mind if I ask you where you're heading to? I was just going for a little walk, stretch my legs, get some fresh air. Give it a rest. I'm not going anywhere. Miss Ashworth, please relax. There's been a mistake. You have been prescribed wrong medication. I apologize sincerely on behalf of my team and the hospital. But luckily we managed to spot it on time. On time? You have no idea what I've been through? Once again, I'm truly sorry. I promise no more drugs will be given to you. I personally guarantee you will have a good, peaceful sleep tonight. And you can be discharged in the morning. Why can't I go tonight? I want to go now. I'm really sorry, but we can't legally discharge suicidal patients without a full psychiatric assessment. It's too late for it now, but I promise we'll have a chat in my office first thing in the morning, okay? And then you can go home. Is that all right? I haven't really got much choice, have I? Now I'd like to ask you some questions about your life, Susan. You might find them very personal, but it's important that you answer me as honestly as possible. Fine. Let's get it over with then, shall we? I'd like to go home at last. Of course, I understand. So, Susan, let's see. Are you living alone at the moment? I live on my own, and it suits me just fine. I don't need anyone. People mostly bore me. Sometimes they annoy me or upset me. I'm happy with how things are at the moment. I have my little bit of space, and it's my own. It's private. I'd like to keep it that way. What do you do for a living? I'm between jobs at the moment. I'll find something soon. But 
It's been difficult. I didn't feel that great. I felt weak and powerless and tired most of the time. I felt really awfully tired. Typical depression symptoms. We can give you something for that. You'll feel stronger and motivated. I admire your faith in modern medication, Doctor. I hope you're right. Describe to me what your mornings look like. What is the first thing you do each day? I drink strong coffee and smoke on the balcony. I know it's not a great start for the day, but it's one of my little pleasures in life that I find very hard to say no to. Would you say that you feel safer at home than outside? I... yeah, I suppose. It's not really about safety. I've just felt sad for a long time now. Really sad, you know? Somehow it brings me down even more when I go out and see all those happy, successful people. It makes me feel more like a failure if I don't see it. It doesn't hurt that much. What do you think is missing in your life? Or rather, what is one thing that you think would make your life better? Something to fight for, you know? A reason to go on. There's always a reason to live. Sometimes we just don't see it that clearly. Well, Doctor, I must have gone all blind then, because I can't see any. Have you ever attended group therapy for depression or some other form of counseling? No. I'm not sure it's a good idea. Especially the group therapy thing. I'd hate it. You should at least give it a go first, and then decide. If you don't like it, we can think of something else, yeah? If you insist. But I doubt it'll help. Do you have problems sleeping? Every night. I take pills for that. There aren't any left now, though. In the light of recent events, I think you should stay off those pills for a while. I suggest you drink some hot milk before bed instead. Would you describe for me how you feel at the moment? Definitely better than before the accident. Good. Hopefully you can now move on from here. With a bit of luck you will enjoy life again. Suicide attempts often have that effect on people. Same as near-death experience. It makes you realize that you're not ready to die yet. Do you find it hard to concentrate? Yes. Sometimes. Do you drink alcohol, Susan? Only sometimes. I'd suggest you don't consume any alcohol at all for a while. Does that sound like something you can do? Yeah, sure. I'm not a big drinker anyway. Sometimes when life gets too much and people feel sad or upset, they think about suicide. Do you often think about suicide? Of course not. I don't know what got into me. It's hard to explain why I did it. I must have thought there was no other options left. But I never used to think about it or plan it. It just happened. 
as if I'd suddenly lost control. I knew what I was doing was wrong, and yet I was unable to stop it. Strange, isn't it? Please, in your own words, try to explain to me why did you really try to take your own life, Susan? Nothing was making me happy anymore. There wasn't a single thing that would bring a smile to my face. I kept thinking, won't it be better if I just disappear? I tried. I really tried to find something. Took a long bath. Picked up a book. Watched some television. But I just couldn't get into anything. All those things seemed like worthless distractions. And I myself felt obsolete. Needless. It just would get worse and worse. By the afternoon, I realized I cried for the past three hours. I... I didn't even know I'd been crying until I went to the bathroom and saw my face in the mirror. I looked like a ghost. I looked like I was dead already, you know? And then I saw the sleeping pills. I thought, why not? And I did it. Do you feel as if you're a burden, or that life isn't worth living? Sometimes, when I feel really low, I just... I used to think everyone would be happier without me. But I guess people don't really care. Besides, I live alone. Who could I be a burden to? What makes you feel better? My cats. I always put out a bowl of food for the stray cats. They're ever so grateful. I like their company. What makes you feel worse? People. They've let me down too many times. I don't know who to trust anymore. I only trust my cats these days. So you say in the suicide note. Because that's true. I've been stabbed in the back more times than I could count. Have you imagined your funeral and how people will react to your death? Probably nobody would come anyway. Can you imagine it? Now that's a sad picture. Loved by no one. Missed only by some cats. No tears shed for me. No flowers on my grave. But that's okay. I never liked flowers. I wouldn't miss that. Finally, I'd like you to tell me about Eric. Eric? Yes, your husband. I believe this might be important. What can you tell me about your relationship? What had happened between you two? This has nothing to do with him. Can I go home now, please? Hmm. Fine. I suppose you've opened enough for one day. Okay, one more question. This is just a formality, but I have to ask, are you going to do it again? That's a hard one. I don't know. But hey, I've got it! The answer is no, I'm not. Thank you very much. Excellent. We're nearly done here. There's just one more thing I must clear with you. What exactly happened last night? Well, after I'd met you outside the ward yesterday, I went back to my room and fell asleep. I slept really well, considering what happened earlier. But 
Then someone woke me up. It was the same nurse who was so friendly with me the first night. She said we needed to talk. We must go, Susan. You are not safe here. But... Please, you must follow me. Quickly. I went after her. The ward seemed very quiet. It must have been late at night. Hurry! Wait for me. Tell me what's going on here. The security guys were gone. She pointed at the corridor and said, You go first. I'll explain everything in a minute. Susan, if we don't escape now, they're going to hurt you. Please trust me. I know a way out of here. I'll help you escape. Let's go down this corridor. I'll be right behind you. I think I can hear someone coming. Damn it! We can't go through there. Let's turn back, Susan. I know another way. Turn left here. We can use the maintenance lift to get us out of this place. What are we doing on the roof? Liz. What the hell are you doing? And why is there blood on your clothes? Liz. It's quicker than the stairs. And besides, all the doors are locked anyway. This is the only way out of here. The only escape. Let's both jump. It won't hurt, you'll see. This is a bad idea. Come down and we'll talk. I've made up my mind. I need to end this suffering now. Besides, I have no one to live for anyway. No one ever listened to me. No one ever cared. I listened. You're a nice girl. You have your whole life ahead of you. You listened. Did you really? Of course I did. You talk a lot, but I've always been a good listener. I liked talking to you. So do you remember that story then? The one I told you the other night? The one about the woman in A&E? Yeah, she smoked a cigarette and burned in bed. Okay, you have listened. Maybe you're right. Or maybe it was just a blind guess. But I must jump anyway. I have no choice. Wait! Please stop and think for a second. Did you not hear what I said? I have no choice. Yes, you do. You can choose to come back inside with me and we'll just forget this like it never happened, okay? Do you remember that other thing I told you? I'm sure I told you about my flatmates. Did I tell you what one of them does for a living? I bet you don't remember that. She's a stripper. Yes. Or at least that's what I think she is. You've listened. I just wish other people did. I'm sure they do. It can't be that bad. What do you know? 
Why do you care, anyway? I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. I thought you of all people knew how it feels, when you're trapped and you can't trust anyone. Look, I'm sure there must be someone who cares about you. My colleagues don't care, my family don't care, even my fucking boyfriend never cared. He said he needed to go find himself. Did I tell you when he broke up with me? On Valentine's Day. Yes. Valentine's Day. You and I could have been good friends, you know. You really listened to everything I said after all. I... I'll be back. When you need help, I'll be there, Susan. But right now, it's time for me to let go. No! After that, I went back. I tried telling people about Liz, but they all thought I was crazy again and didn't believe me. And you were absolutely sure you saw Liz jump off this building? You know, it doesn't matter. I just want to finish this and get some fresh air. Susan, I know Liz well. She wouldn't do something like that. As a matter of fact, I saw her this morning. She's fine. I'd like you to come with me and see her. Say hi. Make sure she's alright. Stop treating me like I'm crazy. Fine. I'll go. I don't even care that much anyway. The door is locked? I plan ahead, Sus. I had a feeling in my gut, and my gut's never wrong. I feel like I really got to know you, though. I'm very sorry you've had such a difficult life. I like your green eyes and your sleek cheekbones. You're a clever girl, Susan, but the sadness has poisoned you for too long. There is no coming back from it. For what it's worth, I would have let you go if it wasn't for Liz. doors. I can't see them. Just walk back to the right side of the stage. My dear little Susan can't miss them. Does Susan like my girls? I knew she would. Whatever they are, tell them to stop staring.
There's always a problem. I'm not even surprised. Which door should I go through? Clearly, not to see that's all the best judgment. One day is finally her only chance to find what she had lost. Waste it. And Susan will never get it back. Susan has one question. And she can only ask one of them. She must use it wisely. Fine. I can do that. But what's the catch? It's very simple. One of my girls always tells the truth. While the other one... And I'm guessing you can't tell me which is which? It's something I've forgotten myself a long time ago, Susan. Well, does it really matter? What I'm questioning is all Susan needs to find the right door. Which door will lead me to my reward? You treacherous, dirty bastard. I opened my heart to you, and you stabbed me to death in cold blood. You'll pay for this. I swear you will. But this means the old woman was right. I can't die. I'm immortal. I think it's time to find out how very mortal you are, Doctor.
You're gonna pay for this, you bastard.
I don't need eyes to enjoy your fear. Scream louder, little bitch! Scream your lungs out! Louder, I said! Yes, this is by far my favorite of songs. Would you like me to dance for you? Unlike you, I know all art needs to be appreciated. Your scream is like a poem without words. Your body, an instrument. I never thought you had it in you. And yet you make every fiber in my body tremble with excitement. Your body will forever be admired by those like me who understand the only pure and true form of art. See you in hell. so much he would have he would have killed me like the others the animal you, you gave him what he deserved who are you they call me the cat lady now get out of here call the police I'm going home. <laughs>